So we'll, uh, we'll start very informally. I just first like uh, Srijit to, or give that to sort of uh, introduce the film to us briefly, and then Srijit to talk about the film, and then we'll open the floor to questions uh, to Mr. Kamal Saru about the film and any references that you got or did not get, and what is the meaning of things around it. So uh, I think we should start. Paper. So the way I do it is I give you a short introduction, then I have three questions, and then we move to the audience. The yeah, our is too strong. Uh, so, the year is 1988, and Mr. Kamal has completed his film from a fund received from the NFTC. Uh, from the NFTC. Uh, and the film is released, it's given a very limited release in certain metros like Bombay and it's seen by only the literati and only the elite, elites and uh, most of them are painters who know about Mr. Swaroop and his reputation in FTII. Uh, if you don't mind me saying this, someone once told me that when Om Dar Badar was released in 1988, everyone in South Bombay knows who Kamal Saroop is. So he's sort of this underground cult guy doing these interesting things. The point being that when the film was made, there were two strains of looking at cinema. Satyajit Ray's realism had taken a back seat. It was thought that Mr. Ray was a spent force and would now just uh, keep making these pro end, uh, end notes to his career. Uh, and the main, the main, uh, this is my word, the mainstream art house was dominated by the sort of very serious Bressonian cinema of Kumar Shani and Mani Khan. And the popular cinema had Bachchan who was going strong and new guys were coming up all the time. The point being that when you would go to watch a film, you already know whether it's a popular film, whether you're supposed to expect Naj or is it something very serious, it has storytelling, it has characters, and these characters come from, from literature. So it's like literature, book, you read a book, you imagine the film, and then you write a script based on this. Now you have a third category, which has some tropes of mainstream cinema, uh, it has this sort of very art house look, because the camera is at a distance, there are few close up, so you don't know how to place it. And I think Om Dar is this film we've all been waiting for, when I first read about it, it was called Loch Ness Monster of Indian Cinema. And this was in 2005. Uh, so since then, uh, I got a DVD of the film from the Kashmiri director, Amit Dutta. Uh, I just called him up and I said, Amit, Tiara, we have to this film. He said, yeah, my friend in Ahmedabad has it. And then through uh, torrent sites, I uploaded the film. And I screened the film in 2007 at Max Muna Bhavan, where Mr. Karu Saru had come. So since then it's become this cult film and uh, several important directors like Mr. Anurag Kashyap and Dibakar Banerjee have talked about it. Other filmmakers like Oshim Aluwalia are very influenced by the film and will tell you about it too. Uh, so if we could start with one question which is that, so the film was made in 87? 80, 80, 87, yeah. 80, so, 80 gone the <coughs> So, let's just have a uh, sequence. Can so you just quickly just uh, ask to sort of give his introduction and then we'll get to questions. Yeah. I think that will be like, it will just take it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, they've, they've yes, been okay. Given, a, given a very uh, nice introduction. Uh, just few things that I wanted to add to what he's already said. That uh, in, the, in the time when Omdar Badar was made, like he said, it, it, was, it was quite polarized. In, in, there was the mainstream and there was what, what was called the parallel cinema. What I felt as a film student when I saw Om for the first time, and on the same time when he uh, had released the torrent, just a few, a year or two before that. So when I first saw it, this was the one film that sort of linked all these things together, you know. So for a, from a film school perspective, when you're wondering where I'm going to go, where I'm going to take it, with my own practice of cinema, this was a very good direction, you know. It, it, it showed me something that was in between of everything and it included also everything. So this is why if you would notice that a uh, lot of guys from film school are very influenced by this film, you know, because they would understand it from a perspective of 
a very formalistic perspective of how film is made, how a cinematic effect is created. So since it was different from so, so, so many of the other things, it pulled us towards it. You know, Here is something that is not that, that is not this. And when you are young, you don't want to be anything, you want to be something new. So that is something that Kamal provided for a vast majority of people. Right? Even today, uh, when we were doing, when the film got released and we, we were trying to promote the film in Facebook, uh, surprisingly, very obscure people from strange, strange places turned up with remarkable understanding of the film. So we did a poster competition and uh, in the posters, we could really see that. Okay? Things that uh, a very involved film critic would probably bring out was being brought out by really uh, nobody people, you know, who had no, no address to refer to such things. So, uh, I mean, this whole thing, everyone is trying to f find out why, why it is the way it is. Uh, I, I think this is the most important reason for that. The, the fact that it links a lot of things. And that is the, in film history probably later on when people like Devdath and other people get more into this, I think this has a position in film history of that linkage, which is very vital. Things can grow from here. No, so, yeah. no, in fact, I think if I'm not mistaken, there's an American film school, if I'm not mistaken, and if I'm not mistaken, it's UCLA, where they teach a subtitle before it was discovered in India. They do a, a session with Omdar Badar subtitle print, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so now let's just have the order of events because Mr. Saroop mm -hmm. made a short film called Dorothy. It, when was that? 74. 74. After that, you assisted Richard Attenborough on Gandhi. Yes. When was that? 82? Uh, 82. Then you uh, wrote the script uh, of Marty Manas with Money Call, which is a very good film. You should watch it. And when you watch the film, you'll see a lot of Mr. Swaroo uh, in it. Uh, purists of cinema say that you know these are Money Calls films. And then there's Kamal Swaroop's film, Om Dar Badar. But when you see Mati Manas, there's a lot of Om Dar Badar in Mati Manas. And I have a copy of it, so you can take it from me. Uh, so that was 84. Uh, Mati Manas is it. 84. And you would not, usually you do the sets with Kumar and Mani, but this time you did the script writing yes. also. Correct. And then I worked, I did the dialogues for Kumar Taran. Taran. Okay, that was also 84. And from, can you just talk a bit about 84 to 87 to release of the film? Uh, 84, uh, I did, uh, I started working on, after Gandhi, on Om Dar Then, uh, uh, 87 it was made, same, I did uh, uh, Mati Manas before Om Dar Then I did, just finishing Om Dar I did uh, Art Direction for Siddheshwari Devi, and I wrote Khayal Gata, Atok Kumar Shah. So if you can talk about script of Om Dar Badar, how you developed it. Uh, we can talk. Like they are asking Bollywood, what idea has come? Yeah. <laughs> uh, one is that way. If I start, then it will take 5 hours. Sir, did you study Wiki Media? Yes, I read it. 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 Yes, I See, I am very, uh, I am considered a master in script writing, you know. so you can't expect that I have no script, you know. But uh, I can tell you the script writing process, okay, how I consider script writing. See, initially, uh, I, uh, I, I, I mean, I never, I never considered myself as a filmmaker to begin with. You know, I came to films as an escape, like you say, you know, film is an escape, escape is cinema. So art is an escape that you go into some other world, you know. So the cinema, not cinema, but getting into film is an escape. Like I went to FTI just to escape. I never considered myself a filmmaker and I had no intention to join Bombay, you know, because uh, I could never imagine to talk to a star or talk to a, any industry person because the, 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 that aggression I couldn't handle it and I had no desire. I was more into literature. I could have become a writer in, you know, in literature and uh, it gives you, you are not dependent on other people or I could have become painter. You know. But I couldn't become a writer because uh, the, uh, I'm a Kashmiri. 
so my you know like basic hard drive is in Kashmiri you know because I spoke that language till the age of five then we moved to Rajasthan so I picked up uh, Hindi and whatever you learn in your school so mainly my Hindi is bookish because I don't uh, we were Kashmiri so we are living outside the town and we don't have a uh, interaction or a discourse or a exchange in the, that language like say a Marwadi family or a Punjabi family or a joint family or that kind of a so the language develops through the exchange so I didn't have that kind of a language I had a very bookish reading you know but uh, I read all the literature by the age of 16 or 17 all you know national literature Bengali, Malayali, Kannad translated in Hindi you know, and world literature and uh, so went to FTI so and I uh, hang around but the, I used to talk a lot about films and uh, was uh, like any young man of that age who wants to make a unique space for himself reject everything you know this is not right this is not right and develop my own theories kind of a thing and almost reject everything and at the same time when you are a young man you try to mold yourself in the image of a you know artist you like like say you like Cocteau or you know you like Andy Warhol or you like Bhupen Khatka so you don't have that kind of a skill at that age but you get attracted by a certain personality or an image of a book or image of a writer and in, in the initially all of us do that you know we don't have the skills to match them you know at the same time either you take a tradition so what has happened that uh, uh, initially in the industry uh, they follow a tradition like Raj Kapoor somebody works with Raj Kapoor so the industry will think okay some something must have rubbed on him so they take him so you have say you have Raj, uh, Raj Kosla you will have Mahesh Bhatt and you will have next generation or you will have uh, Gurudat school, uh, Chetananan, Vijayanan, so you will have a school or you will have a B.R. Chopra, Jat Chopra or many people from that school. So a tradition is formed from beginning of the cinema. You know. Then uh, similar thing has happened in the art scene because you had the traditional artists but in 1857 you had this industrial design schools where anybody could come in and become a an craftsman or an artist. So similar thing happened with these schools that were open up in India in you know, FTI or SRFTI, FTI is earlier. So there we don't belong to a tradition and suddenly we see all these films coming from nowhere you know, you know. and uh, we have no references or contacts to understand that film. I was 19 year old when I was in FTI. So I mean we get some kind of a you know like I mean since First viewing of the film works on the, you know, like reception is very, very physiological or chemical. So, but you don't have any cultural context of the, so I, what would I know about Bergman at the age of 19 or what would I know about the Bresson or Tarkovsky, you know. So, but uh, you're taking a side because you like the reputation of a filmmaker or reputation of a film. So you want to associate with the reputation of an artist and the reputation of a film. You know. Why I am saying because a lot of people who associate with the Omdur Badar like the reputation of the film or reputation of my reputation. You know, you know. So because it looked unique, it looked underground and uh, uh, the age of the adolescent or when you are a young man, you are somewhere underground because you have so much secrets <coughs> which you think is unique and that's what your power is because nobody knows you, you know, because if somebody knows you, he'll kill you. you know. So the secrecy is the identity basically. You know. So the Umdarbada was constructed like that because you can't know it, so you can't kill it. You know, you know. And the frocks are very slippery and you can't weigh them to begin with. You know. Now, how is the f my, I wanted to, since I was 35 or I started when I was 32, 33, the first films you always make on your memories, you know, you know, you know because that's the, uh, when you look back, so you see that figure from outside, like, a, you know, an experience you have 
when you are an adolescent, you are sitting in a garden and suddenly you see yourself in the whole landscape and you are standing outside and you see yourself and there is no thought but you see back of yourself you know and you are merged with the light shade that non breath you know because it's not breathing it's just stillness and you and that's a most enlightening experience you know. so that was the say i look back you know the what happened that i knew one thing that to object objectify a certain things you have to contemplate upon an object you know, you know. it could be a frog it could be a bicycle so uh, you anchor it you know. so i said that i focus on a frog you know i had some relationship with the frogs when i was a young boy or a child you know you know and uh, so the whole images or the thought started you know coming from the frog so you, you take the first crystal then a fractal grows from that you know, you know of uh, a frog like a yogi a frog like a brahman a frog at twice born and I, you know a tad poor like a teenager or an adolescent or you know so the and it's slippery so the nature of the frog became the nature of my thought you know like that we can continue you can so i can take a breath <laughs> meanwhile whatever you think you can bounce back i mean the conversation can be non linear you know. i just wanted to just just to dispel a myth there was a big script like the script was quite big like i was talking to the so very thick script crew crew and very detailed script. they were saying that if it was actually made it would be 8 hours so it there was quite a substantial script <laughs> not you know very far from not having a script it's completely the opposite was it easy for rmdc to actually deal with a project like this in those days see what happened that uh, initially when i wrote the first draft it was in english because the most of the marketing in bombay happens in english and those days the class meant english you know, you know and the hindi is uh, mass you know, you know. and the nfdc was catering for the class because we wanted to create a kind of a cultural class see the in that what happened after a certain influence you think the 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 artists are chosen ones you know painters or poets or something so there was a vacancy for a filmmaker also because the films were not considered art they were part of the mass you know so they were visualizing a space where a painter or a writer or a poet or a sculptor so you had a space available where a filmmaker also can sit there in ncpa or in padra road or in warden road you know that space was available so and the whole cultural marketing of this culture was in english you know so you had to submit to english mera thoda weak hai english so i some of you know put it on you know I, there was a person he could type i don't know how to type you know that time so i dictated and he typed the first draft in 3 days in 3 nights and i submitted to this uh, nfdc and they had a Uh, they have this committee, so you had Yash Chopra and Navendra Ghosh and you had Anil Dharkar. Somewhere they sensed that there is a story, and there was a story, and uh, they said it's very nice. But they would want to make it themselves, you know, you know. So they were making it in their mind. So for them, it looked that it makes sense, you know, because they would they have any text you read, you have to imagine. You know. So otherwise, uh, how will you see it? So when you reading, you have to see it. So they saw it, and uh, they were they must have been very sympathetic also because my English was a lot of spelling mistakes. Like the frogs were written like ropes, and uh, so there was okay kind of a grace marks given to me that maybe these we should get these new guys who maybe don't know English, but the other filmmakers maybe they will correct the spelling mistakes while actual image is delivered. so there were no problem now the problem was because in english you can bullshit anything you know you might say spirit mistake ye wo you in dialogue you might say fuck you ye wo you know you because english doesn't belong to a specific ethnic uh, local typical culture you know you you it's generalized like facebook has a 
a Facebook language, you know. It's not Vasapur language or it is not, you know, like Ajmer language or it is not Malayali language, you know. So, but in English, you could take any identity you like, you know, you know because uh, there is nobody sitting there that uh, your sentences are all wrong. You know, you know. So, so I had to write in Hindi. So it took me about two years time. You now because now I had a discipline. I mean, script got approved. You know, you know. The discipline was something that. First thing is that whatever I do, I will remove the familiarity. Familiarity is that it should nothing should be familiar. Now, what is what is the best way to remove the familiarity is remove the sex and violence. You know, you know. Because if there's a sex and violence, it looks like film. It looks like familiar. You can connect with a film if there's an action, sex and violence. You know. I removed it. You know, you know. There's no sex. There is no violence because it's, they don't have real guns. They are Diwali pistols. You know. This was the first thing. The second thing I said, I'll write sentences and I'll keep writing them unless they lose their meaning. You know, you know. So you have a sentence which has words are familiar, but the syntax of the sentence is not settling down. You know, you know. It is still alive all the time. So the reader is familiar with all the words. But he is trying to settle them down, to give it a sentence which is which is grammatically right, and in that, you know, in that uh, activity, he is investing his own time. Because basic principle of the cinema is that you given two hours of time, and the audience is actually doing the labor because they are investing in their time, their time, in the film. So. The equation has to be, if you have a two hours, how much time can it generate? You know? Can it give you 100 years or can it give you 10 days or can you give you... It depends on the kind of a time the audience invests into the film. That is actually the time of a film, not the two hours. You know? Now there are different methods. How do you generate that time? We, I mean, there is no right place to talk about these things. They that you can meet and we'll talk about the duration and non-duration. So why was this a deliberate process as such of making yes, that yes, sound? Yes. But why, why did you want to do that? Did you feel that the story demanded it in any way? No, because, because the, the, these were my theories, you know. I was working, my aesthetics. Well, my aesthetics I was working about, about uh, you know, and my position as a filmmaker. You know. No, I, I think uh, you have talked about Dadaism once, it's been something you work a lot on. Huh, because I was uh, attracted to the Dadaist way of thinking, you know, which is they have this half word, half image. So the, you have a hybrid, which is uh, it, it would be a half word or half image. What kind of a language is that? Because somewhere the uh, either the image uh, gives birth to a word or a word gives to a, but can you have in between position like a missing link, like a salamander, which is a phase between the reptile and the amphib amphibian or the reptile? You know, so in that process, I was working. You know, it was a very deliberate kind of a thing, but they don't come uh, very easily you know, because to believe in this world, you have to delude yourself and. Uh, once you start deluding yourself, there's a possibility that you don't come out of that delusion. You know, you know. So that is uh, because, like I was thinking about, I was playing on the uh, uh, left and right side. So like this uh, Sankar, Babuji Sankar, he's called Sankar, Sankar means hybrid. So you have the caste hybrids in the history. You know. So here he is, is he a low caste, high caste? So then I was thinking of that uh, left side or the right side. So left side is, you know, repressed left, you know, like dirty work left side does, right side. So you have that right is against the left, you know, so there will be a conflict. So there, the, if there is a conflict, so how it is going to uh, impact your body, you know. So I actually went through the spondylitis, you know, 
suddenly like uh, my whole sympathetic um, uh, system it got entangled like a niwar of a cart you know niwar of you know like that you know so it works affects your uh, system physical system you know like we say there's a lot of biology in bioscope you know. what about the poetry <clears throat> where did you get inspiration for the poetry it used to come into flashes but so the thing is i read a lot i read a lot and uh, the, the, then it gets crystallized into something nonsensical those poetry you know. but so the again the principle is that uh, story is a way of story now what happens you have so much information so much chaos now we don't have enough space to store the information in you know. so the story becomes a means to store this much information so it takes a shape of a story you know. now if you deconstruct that story you can retrieve all the information so the so there is a lot of information because i am reading about caste i am reading about what class is what name is what history is what breadth is what pushkar is what brahma is you know. and then you trying to form a story out of it so sometimes you can retrieve sometimes you don't you know. but the other thing was that i had a priority you know uh, a priority between choosing between the expression and communication you know so in the film what happens because of certain kind of a discipline and uh, uh, rules of the expression uh, i lose a lot of communication it also seems like there is this play between the rational and the irrational and the irrational and the rational For example, if you read the interviews you've given, you're actually explaining the film completely, but then it's nonsense. So it's either carefully constructed nonsense or nonsensically constructed sense. And even at this moment, you know, I can explain it uh, differently. You know, see, my problem is that I am not taught grammar, so I never remember what I said earlier. You know, I can't repeat myself. You know, because I have no. Uh, discipline in grammar you know so i can say something else you know which i hadn't said said before and i'll see the film differently you know, because now you are asking me how do i tell it you know, you know so i tell it all the time differently you know so when you were making the film so 25 years back uh, was there a different perception to it and when 25 years uh, away from it you see it is there a different angle you view the movie see the first time after a long time i am seeing this film with some confidence you know because the uh, i have been watching in dirty uh, vhs as and torrents you know and it so irritating it just to put me off and i said if this film is getting released uh, i hope people will be kind to it so i was very scared of watching this film but on the screen when i saw now i felt slightly confident because at least the sound was appealing and music was nice and i could sense the story otherwise i was uh, because that time also people were discussing is it a film or is it not a film you know you know because some people uh, when i submitted to the panorama and the national award they said no you can't call it a film you know because film has you know and the film what happened the films are basically you follow the actors and his development and you know it's not following the actor you know. but usually what happen you have amir khan you follow it you know and he follow and he changes and in the end he himself says abhi khatam ho gaya bhai <laughs> so where is the story you know, you know? i mean where is the story you know? the story is not what you say shole has a story i don't find any story in shole shole will be more absurd than omdar wada for me or disjointed and disconnected you know, you know? for them it's easy because there's nothing to say so they can carry two hours with action and amitabh and dialogue or selim javed you know, you know but for us it's more difficult because we take on to the times and so much information you know so it's a more risky business what we doing you know. editing must have been a big challenge editing again the frog principle you know, you know because the rhythm of the frog you know so he he'll, he'll take a three leaps khat 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 then he'll come to the rest then you might take two leaps you know, you know so the rhythms were like that you know. 
and the other I used to say, you know, like the editing between the jhatka and halal. So jhatka is that that before the shot dies, you kill it. You know, so halal slowly, slowly will let the shot die, fade out, then begin the scene from the beginning, come to the middle, or some people start the scene from the middle. You know. Mine was like you know before it takes its last breath, chop it off. You know. So the physicality of this violence in the editing gets communicated. You know. It's a violence is in the editing. You know. So the violence is not in the idea. You know. It's in the act itself. You know of editing. The, the like a lot of people said it's a very violent film. You know. But act is violent. It is not violent, but the act is violent. So when you set out to write, like you had this visual of a frog uh, mostly in your head, and but how did the story form of Om and the family and what happens to Om? Uh, you must be having a linear story in your mind at least about the family and through that what you're saying. So the basic the story is, story. you know, like last idea around the basic story is there's this boy, you know, older one. And uh, one day he goes to the school and uh, he brings in frogs in the school and uh, he's caught and uh, he has this misunderstanding that he has been suspended from the school. So he stops going to the school and uh, he, he falls short of the attendance and he's lying at home that I'm going to the school and on the day when the results are announced before anybody comes to know, he runs away. He runs away and uh, there is then another plot about this that the, he runs away in his father's shoe. There are diamonds, you know. So he runs away and somewhere few diamonds fall, you know. So now he doesn't know what to do, so he can hold his breath for a long time. Now there is a panda and he has a, this tank in Pushkar and he dives in and he takes out the money, you know. And he lives well, you know. But then there's a dispute between the panda and him that who ownership about the the water or the money inside. So he again leaves this panda. You know. It's almost like a producer and the director's conflict you know, there. You know. Who has the ownership, copyright over this idea? Then uh, he again goes and he goes to this frogland, you know, where he is catching the frogs and selling them. So you have again plot about the Babuji and the jeweller, you know. So there uh, he goes there and then you come to know that his frogs have the uh, jewels, you know, you know. So he loses that business also, you know. Then you have a plot that the, the Diwali becomes world war and ye, wo, ye, wo. Where did that come from? I mean, how? That's a parallel plot going... Uh, we uh, understand that, but uh, uh, if, if you had to still connect it to the central Oh, I mean, where, where does the world war fit into your idea? See, world war... Uh, I mean, if you don't mind... Say, see, say, the say, world war is given... Because, you know, like, uh, when you saw in the television, yeah. the Kuwait war, it was looking like Diwali, you know. Like, I given <laughs> an image like that, you know. <laughs> so, uh, in the beginning, it's a wish. The, you know. So, these two guys give him, and give him the gun, and they say, you kill yourself with this gun. They give him a Diwali pistol. They say you shoot yourself and die with this gun. So he has to turn this gun into a real gun. You know. So the whole alchemic process is that. You know. So that's one and that Angan story is a very lovely story. You know. That's a fantastic plot line. You know. Anyway, so he goes back to Panda and then you have this Pushkar sir descending. You know. So he says you give Darshan every day and we will become Malamal, you know. So there is this marketing people, they give him a sign and according to that he has to come out with a product. So the different, so he starts misunderstanding these signals. So suppose they want to give him, uh, they want to, he has to bring out some family planning product, you know, or some contraceptive or something. He brings out the fish keychain. Now the fish keychain is uh, connected with the tea uh, of contraceptive, you know, Copper, copper tea or something. You know, you know. So he started fooling around with the signs. You know, you know. Now, 
he made this atlas who has become uh, king of the frog land you know you know so he tells him that have you signed the contract you know so the now the contract is that non cooperation movement against the big breath or brahma's breath why did he break his promise so uh, for the protest everybody is going to hold their breath at that point now the atlas tells him when you are breathing when you are not breathing you are cooperating because you are working because when everybody when they breathing they are working i mean so for you breathing will be non cooperation but you will be inside the water at that time you know so it's your murder plan you know and actually that was the plan you know now he is committed idealist if he has signed the contract then it means he has to breathe inside it means he will die and when the dead body will float so the watch will start clicking so he is it's he is a model on the of the waterproof watches you know and they'll shoot so it becomes a ad film on the waterproof watches now philosophically i have three uh, endings you know one is the dead body comes out so it means if he is committed to the non cooperation movement about holding one's breath the other thing is that he transforms into a frog you know, you know. because if he transforms into a frog then these uh, rules don't apply to him third is that uh, he dead but a frog rides upon him because the frog is his soul and the last option i had that which i have written a next script called home in the satellite city where his breath changes into helium you know. so the the these laws don't apply to him anymore what about the subplot with jagdish and gayatri and the finish is to get the audience in you know in the beginning you say okay it's a last time fine fine and they get in then you close the door you know. because that's the only familiar thing they feel audience is very happy you know okay we got it you know but why do you show gayatri not feeling herself and only uh, you know is she is it like a kind of a revenge on jagdish that she, you know that he, he is useless like and useless you know because so far he was away yeah. he is got a baby she is got a baby also that paying us in the room you know you know when he says so whose uh, baby is it is it his baby yeah. maybe okay. but the <laughs> idea is that you know we all are paying us you know <laughs> but there are very strong uh, uh, you know undertones of latent sort of female power you know गायत्री मैं तुम्हें इंडिपेंडेंट करने चला था तुम पर इंडिपेंडेंट हो गया या तुम बीए का कोर्स क्यों नहीं कर लेती आई हैव फोर व्हाट इज दिस या आई हैव फोर सिस्टर्स एंड देयर इज आल्सो दिस इंपोर्टेंस ऑफ दिस मेल फिगर अराउंड हर दैट जगदीश इज आल्सो एज बट ही टीचेस हर ही आल्सो बिकम ही इनिशिएट्स हर इनटू दिस नो बट ही इज अ काइंड also another thing is uh, somebody like gayatri in real in reality would actually be like this we go to small towns and you see see women they are not but gayatri is also part of the uh, pushkar story you know you know i mean uh -huh. there is a pushkar i i, I can tell you that story for a funny <clears throat> no i think what what emerges from the film uh, which i really like on the big screen of the subtitles is that Uh, this time actually I did follow the story. I, I could, I swear, I could follow the story. But uh, what I found is that, and I was watching it with my mother, who also said that I couldn't follow the story at all. But the film has a quality of attention; it holds your attention. And because my teacher Manikal would also say, you know, that if you watch a Bresson film, it's different from a Nozu film because Bresson has this quality of attention. and no you cuts like that it's a different so it should hold your so nonsense holding your attention as being cinema and sense you make later basically what you see this human figures frogs yeah. and uh, something happens you know now so if you get something very easily If you're, if you're, even any anything in life, if you get something very easily, then you will let it go also very easily. Yeah. The more time you spend trying to figure out what is this happening, you know, maybe I mean honestly, I don't know why it is and what it is, and I don't know everything about it, but I know a few things. That, and I think that those few things are enough to keep growing inside it, you know, and it's something to be discovered. But otherwise, if you see a film, you understand everything. Then you don't want to see it. Why would you want to see it again? Have you seen any film which you don't understand? I read just a novel. Like I don't know. It's a no, no film. Okay. 
but it is again just like an abstract just like no any movie. any name any film that you will say no yaar i can't understand ha huh? persona no no apna india yaar ha aapki aur koi wo it's very sad like there lot of see you think if you understand a thing it dies you know yeah. basically so you have to keep it that you don't really understand but you think you understand you know so it has to be in between you know, you know. so it, it remains alive once you understand that thing you know, you know. no actually i used to tell people because i used to show the film free so then later after the screening people used to tell me you know like okay but where is the story what is the story i said you know that's the question do these frogs have diamond in them or no you know <laughs> <laughs> that's the basic thing does it it's a frog you know does it have a story inside or no you know you know then later i used to be slightly more generous i said okay you know like you saw the film for free but i will i will charge you for the story you know, you know. so if you want to know the story you have to pay me you know. so i can also make little bit of money because you know otherwise i was making no money from the film you know. so i used to tell the story to the people they paid me of course you have paid and uh, saw the film so i can't ask you <laughs> so the story is free you know.